Hello. In this video I want to show you a method with which it is possible to do some useful calculations for electronic circuits which involve operational amplifiers. I made this episode as a video response to the op-amp tutorial video by Dave Jones. If you don't know that video but want to watch it, which I do recommend, then look up the link in the description below. While I like Dave's video a lot, I still thought that some of the stuff that I learned about op-amps could be a good addition to it. So what is this video about? This video is about doing some basic calculations for op-amp circuits. In his tutorial video Dave explained the working principle behind the inverting amplifier, which is probably the most common topology for op-amps. He also explained how the amplification factor is determined by the external resistors connected to the amplifier. He however said that he wouldn't derive it mathematically, but that is exactly what I will do now. The mathematical function that describes the output voltage of an op-amp as a function of its input voltage is called transfer function. The transfer function of the inverting amplifier is V out equals minus V in times R2 over R1. You will recognize the amplification factor minus R2 over R1 from Dave's video. The transfer functions of the most common topologies can of course be found in their final form in books or on the internet. But if you have a more complicated circuit, as it will almost always be the case in real-world electronics, the standard equations won't help you much. It is therefore necessary to know how a transfer function can be derived from a given circuit. Luckily, this is easier than it sounds. In fact, you only need to know a few basic methods to do that. So, what do you need to know? First, you have to know Ohm's law. The fact that the voltage across a resistor equals the product of its internal resistance with the amount of current that is forced through it by a source of some kind. Second, you have to understand Kirchhoff's voltage law, abbreviated KVL. To remind you, KVL says that the sum of all voltages in a closed loop is always zero. Third, you need Kirchhoff's current law abbreviated KCL as well. KCL says that the sum of all currents flowing in and out in one given node is always zero. And fourth and last, you have to be aware of some of the properties of the ideal op-amp. In almost all relevant cases the op-amp will have feedback and thus the phenomenon of virtual short circuit or virtual ground will occur. This is mathematically described by the fact that the differential voltage Vd equals zero. The second important property is the fact that the input current of the op-amp here named Id also equals zero. Now that I have explained what you need to be aware of, I will simply demonstrate how this method works by deriving some transfer functions of some of the most important standard topologies of the operational amplifier. I will start with the most important one the inverting amplifier. Here you see an inverting amplifier with the input voltage Vi and the output voltage Vo. In addition to Vi and Vo, we define the potential difference between the non-inverting and the inverting input pin of the op-amp as the so-called differential voltage. We also add three current arrows representing the currents which flow in and out the node at the op-amp's inverting input. Furthermore, we need the voltages across the external resistors, which can be calculated by using Ohm's law. Please ignore the output current of the op-amp for now. You don't need it to use the method that I'm about to show you. With that being done, we will now look for nodes and loops, which will enable us to use KVL and KCL. First, we can mark the node at the input and call it NO. It is the only relevant node in this simple circuit. After that we can label two loops. Loop 1 can be seen here. It involves VO. The circular arrow shows in which direction the voltage arrows are counted as positive. The direction can be chosen at will. I choose a clockwise direction so that VO is positive. The second loop is loop 2, which includes V in. I count this loop in a counterclockwise direction so that Vi is also positive. With the voltages over the resistors, the node and the two loops 
We have almost all properties that we need to derive the transfer function. The last thing missing are the two important conditions of an ideal op-amp with feedback. The fact that VD as well as ID is zero. Now we can start calculating. We first take a look at the two loops and try to formulate two so-called mesh equations. The mesh equation for loop 1 is VO plus VD minus VR2 equals zero. After transposing you get V out equals VR2 minus VD. And together with the condition that VD equals zero it follows that the output voltage VO is equal to the voltage drop VR over resistor R2. Now we can take a look at loop 2. The mesh equation for loop 2 is VI plus VD plus VR1 equals zero. Transpose for VI and you get VI equals minus VR1 minus VD. And it then follows with the condition VD equals zero that the input voltage VI actually equals minus VR1. Now we can take a look at the node and formulate a so-called nodal equation. The sum of all currents in NO equals zero. While I count all arrows pointing towards the node as positive and those that point away as negative. Following that rule you get the nodal equation minus I1 plus I2 minus ID equals zero. And with the condition that ID is also zero because no current flows in the ideal op-amp we get minus I1 plus I2 equals zero. After transposing you can see that I1 equals I2. Which actually means that the same current is flowing through both resistors. Since it is the only relevant current, I simply call it I from now on. Now, with the knowledge of that common current and the help of Ohm's law, it is possible to calculate the two voltage drops over the resistors R1 and R2. Now, we can insert the voltages VR1 and VR2 in the two mesh equations which we earlier transposed for VI and VO. To get the transfer function, we now only need to divide VO by VI and transpose for VO. After some minor conversions, we obtain the actual transfer function of the inverting amplifier to be seen here in the green box. VO equals minus VI times R2 over R1. Now after this demonstration you might have the impression that this method is rather cumbersome. But believe me, with some practice, many of the intermediate steps can be skipped and you can use this method very effectively after some practice. Since this video is already over 9 minutes long, I will proceed with a derivation for some of the other important topologies in part 2 of this tutorial. In part 2, I demonstrate the derivation of the transfer function for the summing amplifier, non-inverting amplifier, the inverting integrator and the inverting differentiator. If you want to know more about practical and theoretical electrical engineering then please watch my other videos and please subscribe to my channel.